On today's episode, I want to talk about being pregnant in a foreign land. Being pregnant in Germany was actually one of the big reasons why I chose to leave the US to come to the land of beer and pretzels. So let's talk about why. Hello, you Lieblings. I'm Mari, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. If you're new here, hiya. I am a proven American halfwit who nabbed herself a hot German and is now carrying his child. When my husband and I were dating and trying to decide what country or continent, for that matter, we were going to live in, personally, one of the big pros that made me lean towards Germany versus the US was what would happen in the event I found myself with child. But what are those differences? Let's count the ways, because it is YouTube. <laughs> Number one, it is overall safer to give birth in Germany than it is in the States. Oh yeah, we're starting with the heavy stuff. <laughs> when regarding maternal mortality ratio, which according to the World Health Organization is the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and site of the pregnancy from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accident or incidental causes. Mouthful, I know. As of 2017, Germany ranked 26th with a ratio of seven maternal deaths per 100,000 live births, compared to the US ranked at 57 with 19 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births. And to add insult to injury within the United States itself, my home state of Indiana as of 2018 is ranked 46th of 50 in maternal deaths. Oy. There's a really good article from the Indianapolis Star that touches on this, and I could probably do a whole episode on that, but I'm not going to. And if you are interested, I did link the article in the description below. Number two, prenatal care. In the US, like most things, it's pay to play. If you want birthing classes, you have to pay for it. If you want a doula or a midwife, you have to pay for it. If you want to give birth in a hospital, you have to pay for it. You want to go to the doctor for regular checkups? You guessed up, you have to pay for it. <laughs> and that's even after you have health insurance. You still have to pay because let's face it, health insurance in the US is as useless as a bag of dicks. Granted, your mileage differs from state to state. I was talking to one of my besties who had both of her kids in California because during the Obama administration, the monthly checkups are actually free, um, but you do have to, to pay for the ultrasounds. As opposed to another friend of mine, she had one kid in Indiana and one kid in Illinois. And she was actually telling me how, like, just everything you had to pay for. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get to the cost of that in a minute. But yeah, it's... Yeah, anyway. Um, also, quick side note to my German audience. You may have heard me use the words doula and midwife and probably are wondering what the difference is. A midwife in the States is the same as in Germany, which is called a Hebamme in German. A doula is not medically trained, but can offer physical, emotional, and informational support to an expect expectant mother before, during, and after childbirth. I do have a friend, the one who had the kid in Indiana and one in Illinois. She actually used a doula for both of her pregnancies and is very much an advocate for any kind of support for mothers. It is very helpful to have someone give support um, as well as finding someone that could be easier on the wallet. Anyway, Germany is much, much, much simpler. Uh, you pay for health insurance and it pays for everything. Come here, come here, goodness gracious. All right, 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 right. right. Oh, good grief, okay. Oh. I, have, I have Roxy here right now because she's, she's very borky today. We heard something weird outside. So I visit my gynecologist or Frauenarzt every month for regular checkups. Yeah. Yes, I know. And that includes ultrasounds. And I also have a midwife because um, in Germany, it is very common to also have a midwife. And I get both because insurance pays for both like it's supposed to. <laughs> I can contact 
either of these women pretty much any time if I have concerns, which I have. <laughs> and they are both amazing. And um, they have put me more at ease more often than not. It's awesome. My, my midwife also conducts my birthing classes, which I will start in July. I would have to pay extra for my husband to take part, but my insurance pays for me. Um, however, in both countries, you do have to pay for like extra blood tests. So my friend in California had told me about the testing is, is very extensive in California. Um, it has a very like good, robust prenatal testing um, situation. <laughs> Um, I also went to a specialist in Nuremberg for testing and um, in both cases it did come out of pocket and the prices seem to be about the same so at least in that in that sense it wasn't it wasn't so bad number three giving birth so this is my first child so I'm sure the actual mechanics of giving birth are the same and I will revisit this later once I've actually gone through this but I wanted to touch on this because of the cost like I said before so according to a Vox video from 2016 that I found, which I've linked below, the cost of giving birth in the States can range anywhere between $1,189 to $11,986. The problem is you don't know what they're charging you for. I've actually seen videos where um, the, couple, a, the couple has been charged for skin-to-skin -skin contact with the baby. Like, why would you get charged for holding your baby? But like I said, the pricing varies. There's no way to tell. My friend, the one that had her one kid in Indianapolis, in, one, uh, in Indiana, in the state of Indiana, the other in the state of Illinois, she told me that both kids together, even after insurance, still cost $18,000. Yay! As opposed to Germany, <laughs> you have insurance. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> Like, how hard is this? Uh, anyway, please do not throw up in my lap. <laughs> Number four, postpartum. If you need a lactation consultant to help with breastfeeding in the States, you guessed it, pay to play, babies. In Germany, my midwife will take care of that for me. In fact, the Hebam is time to shine is after the birth during a time called Wochenbett, which literally translates to week's bed, referring to the first eight weeks after birth while the birth giver is recovering from said child birthing, as well as being on hand for any and all things the new parents could need. So according to the information supplied by my Hebame, she will visit every day for the first 10 days, every other day in the second week, twice in the third week, and then once a week between weeks four and eight. But of course, you know, if the new parents need more visits or whatever, that's discussed and that's between them and their hebame. In the States, you only get help from friends and relatives if you're lucky, and that's it. There is no bed rest for a mother because number five, maternity leave. The US does not guarantee on a federal level maternity leave in the US. However, you are entitled to FMLA, which stands for the Family and Medical Leave Act. Um, it does guarantee job security for up to 12 weeks. However, it is unpaid. So you can do it if you can afford it. But after all those medical bills, who can afford it outside of rich people? But again, your mileage may vary depending on which state you live in. So I had mentioned my friend, one of my besties in California, there um, you do actually get to start your maternity leave four weeks before the birth and you do get 12 weeks afterwards. Then you can get another 12 weeks of family bonding time, but that is unpaid. Maternity leave in Germany is guaranteed for 14 weeks, six weeks before the birth and eight weeks after. But there is also parental leave, which can be split between both parents up to until the child's third birthday. So essentially it's like maternity leave is up to three years <laughs> to put it like in simple, simple terms. And during parental leave, you also qualify for Elterngeld or parental allowance, which is a percentage of your salary to help mitigate the loss of income during this time. Um, this means that not only do I get time off, but my husband can also take time off so he can also bond with our child. And this idea is pretty much blasphemous in some circles in the U.S. And I'm looking at you, Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Whatever. The rest of the world has already figured this out. While the U.S. continues with this whole mentality of our grandmammies could give birth and then go back to tilling the fields five minutes later, so should all women. 
<sighs> and I will say that when I had laid all this information out to my parents when I first told them I was pregnant, I can tell you they were definitely put at ease. They may be half a world away, but they can sleep better knowing how well I'm taking care of here in Germany. In fact, my dad said, and I quote, well, if you're ever feeling bad while you're pregnant, you can come back to the States and feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> you really just say that. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm really looking forward to finally meeting this kid. My mom is actually coming to stay with us for two months, and my dad will also come and stay with us for a time, and we already live in the same building as my mother-in-law, and my husband's also planning on taking time off, so this kid will have an army to help keep it alive. Yay, village. <laughs> and there will be plenty of adults around to also make sure Roxy doesn't feel neglected either. Honestly, I couldn't be in better hands, and in the meantime, it's just the waiting game. I've only touched the surface on the differences. If there are any questions or topics concerning pregnancy in either the U.S. or Germany that you would like to learn more about, then definitely let me know in the comments, and I will happily make other videos. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you'd like to see on this channel. If you want more info on my books and newsletter, check them out in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through the TikToks, the Instagrams, Twitters, or the Facebooks. And that's it. Until next time, adi!